This is Penelope, my Canaan Irish Terrier mix, and I've had her since she was two months old, and she's about eight years old now. Today, I'm going to tell you how to save your dog from heat stroke, which is what happened to her yesterday, um, and she's the sweetest dog, so this was very traumatic for me. I had just shaved her because it's summertime, so it gets really hot. But she climbed into my car when I was unloading groceries and I closed the door without noticing her there. And we were calling for her and looking for her for a while. She must have been in there for over an hour. And when we found her, I just, it just clicked in my head. She must be in the car and I ran over. She was limp. She was completely limp. Um, she was heat stroking. So luckily, I think angels were watching over her. That made it click in my head to go look for her, and we had already set up this kitty pool so the dogs can cool off on the hot day. So lucky for us, we were just able to dip her in the pool like this. This is five minutes after, and then I put an ice pack on her head, and we try to put some ice packs in there to cool down the water because it was still kind of warmer than we would have liked. And we try to get her body temperature down when I first checked her temperature. She was at 103 at this point here. She was at about like 96 or so. So she, so she started getting up on her own finally. She didn't have very good motor skills. That's why she's all muddy right here. She actually rolled over. She kept falling over to her side. She couldn't really stay up. So she's wobbling here. But, but this was very promising because I think that she was able to kind of bounce back and try to go back to normal. Um, her temperature, I think I dropped it too fast, so you actually want to do it slower, and if you don't have the ability to check your temperature, this is tricky, I happen to have a thermometer. So, she was a little bit cold at this point, she was shaking, um, because she felt cold on the outside, but her temperature at this point was still 96 uh, degrees, so that's that's good though, but I think I just dropped it a little bit too fast, you can see her shaking a little bit. But she was in good spirits, and... I just kept monitoring her, and I wanted to make sure she was okay. Kept talking to her. She started to drink water on her own. She was very thirsty, but she couldn't drink too much. I was worried that she would throw up. She did eventually, later, just once, did throw up all the water, but she kept drinking. Um, she was able to get her motor functions back to normal. Uh, her spirits were up. So I think that definitely cooling her off right away saved her life. Rather than trying to rush her to the vet. Because she would have been overheating the whole time. So here she is. Her tail was wagging. And then you know, then it drops. She she gets a little bit confused. A little bit overwhelmed. But um, she was kind of ready to jump back into the, the, you know, the pack. She's going back outside. She's walking like a puppy, I think. Because she, she was still recovering. Today she's a little bit better. Um, her haircut to me makes me feel like she looks like a puppy anyway she uh finally got a little bit happier and bouncier she wanted to run around see her tail's up and she's she's happy so at this point i realized we saved her life she's gonna be okay i'm still taking her to the vet today because uh, now it's the next day um let's see she I, I laid her down i thought maybe she needed to rest I laid her down on the bed that didn't last very long but she was she was still happy and responding, and I kept talking to her and petting her, just trying to keep her as comfortable as possible. Um, she kept staring at me a lot, though. And I don't know if it was like, how could you let that happen to me, or thank you for saving me, or I don't know what's going on. But um, she definitely did not want to be alone. Um, finally, see, she's running around on her own. She just doesn't need any help, any support. She went to pee, and then I saw her poo a little bit afterwards. So that's a good sign. Uh, she did eat as well. And that's also a good sign. She has epilepsy. Penelope has epilepsy, hypothyroidism, and a, and a heart murmur. So she's already on a bunch of medication. And I was really worried that this heat stroke would cause complications for her. But um, I'll find out more when I take her to the vet. The point is, that look at the difference. She was completely limp in the car. She was completely done and limp. And not responding, just panting. Her eyes were glazed over. Her tongue was hanging out. She was covered in slobber. And now she's okay. 
And this was about um, cooling her off for about 30 minutes. And then this took like an hour, an hour and a half for her to go back to normal and walk around. And, and today she's fine. Um, I made sure she slept with me last night. So she was on the bed with me. She's perfectly comfortable here. If you can see, she's sprawled out. This means she's comfortable and trusting and just snuggling with me and back to back with Artemis. That is Artemis right there. And Kimber, our cat, joined us as well. She's about eight also. And that's Sophia, my border collie, and she's about ten. These are my three girls. That is Sophia in the middle. She's my oldest. She's ten. She's Welsh uh, Pointer and Border Collie. And I got Penelope about the time Sophia was a year and a half. She was only a couple months old to keep her company. And then later, um, I got Artemis over there on the left. Um, and I couldn't find her owner, so I ended up adopting her. And this is kind of what I've known and I've dealt with and I've been on my own. It was these three girls and then cats. I have um, a few cats of my own. I ended up with four cats at one point, so I had seven animals all by myself. My mom and my brother moved in with me uh, 2019. And they brought with them their two dogs, Wookie and Claire. That's Claire in the front there. So the pack grew. Now we had five dogs and I had my three cats, eight animals total. And then my boyfriend moved in. That's his dog in the bottom there on the dog bed. That's a girl. She's a boxer pit mix. Um, and my mom has been so helpful. And I don't know how, what I would do without her, honestly. All the dogs and cats get along. There's, I think, Claire, girl, and Penelope. And um, that's my mom, Penelope, and Claire. So we're a happy family here. And we take our animals to the vet in Mexico because we couldn't afford it otherwise with, uh, with all our animals, with 10 animals. I don't take them in the car like I used to anymore. It's usually two at a time. Every now and then we'll take all six dogs, but it gets a little chaotic. So that's me, girl, and Penelope. And I said my boyfriend had a cat, so this is pristine. And I'm showing you all these things to kind of lighten the mood and also kind of show you that we have a lot on our hands. But it doesn't make it any less traumatic or worrisome when one of our animals gets sick or suffers anything. Uh, there's pristine again. So that's 10 animals and then my brother is fostering two cats as well. So technically we have 12 animals on the property but those two cats are going back home pretty soon. All of our dogs and cats do get along, as I mentioned before, that's pristine, and I think it's either Snowball or Kimber, I can't tell in this picture, and um, it took a little while for the cats to get acclimated with each other, but they do sleep together with the dogs a lot of times. Nagisa, that's my cat Nagisa, he loves Penelope, so he's always, always looking for her, always seeking her out. She's been sick before, she's gone through surgeries. And he's right there by her side. He doesn't leave her. He, um, I don't know, I don't know what it is about her that he loves so much, but he's always there. And it is a lot to take care of so many animals. Luckily, none of the cats really have given us any health problems. Snowball, this is Kimber, but my other black cat, Snowball, is the one that he keeps going to vet a lot because he gets injured. He's just a rascal, a little playful rascal. And... I try to even out my attention to all of them. The attention part's a little hard when you have so many animals. You can't focus on one. But I try to pamper my girls, of course. It's all of them on the bed. All of mine. Uh, the, like, I said, like I said, the cats join us. <laughs> Sometimes I have all the cats and the dogs on the bed with me. So it just depends. It's a little harder right now. I don't have a king-size bed anymore. And they don't really fit so that they sleep in their dog beds now. But... Um, I guess thank you for watching. Um, I hope that there was valuable information at the beginning of this video and I hope that the slideshow lightens the mood and that you enjoyed it. And um, I'm going to be posting a little bit more about my animals, um, the vet visits and everything. So please like and subscribe if you, if you like the animal content like this video and I will be posting more soon. Thanks. Catch you later. Mm -hmm.